the way I see it in conservation is, is if we do heal the land, it'll eventually turn into healing ourselves. The biggest difficulty that I see in monitoring is most of it is so complex and you end up with rows of numbers and it's difficult to interpret. So we've been using some simple methodologies that we'll talk about today and hopefully demonstrate on the land that will give us a pretty clear indication of land health and what the land is trying to tell us through its own language. My name is Delane Atsby. I am the Executive Director of Indian Nations Conservation Alliance. Indian Nations Conservation Alliance is a nonprofit that has been in existence since 2002, and we recently relocated it to Taos, New Mexico. My name is Kirk Yadzia. I have a small consulting and education business called Resource Management Services. I have been working with um, holistic management for the past uh, 30 years almost. In order to be truly sovereign and, and really reinforce that status into their treaties, we really need to have a food system in place that we can rely on in times of need. And maybe when there is times where we don't need it, we can sell it. But uh, we have all the resources right now within our means. It's just a matter of uh, organizing and, and getting good management behind it to make it, a, make it a viable product. I definitely believe in uh, biological monitoring. That's the dashboard to getting us where we're going to go in the future. So all those gauges that we look at and determine, you know, the optimum, optimum health for our rangeland, they'll take us closer and closest, closer to our destination. Most of us are not born with the knowledge of the land health issues and how to tell whether the land is healthy or not. And actually the land can speak to us and tell us that information. I call it the language of the land. And we have to learn that language. And that language uh, is a different set of indicators that we have to learn to read, such as is there presence of erosion, water that's running off the land that should be soaking in, is there cover on the soil surface so that the soil organisms and the organic matter can be retained in the soil, or is that also washing away? Is there the correct mix of different kinds of plants, animals, shrubs, trees that should be growing in that particular soil type or area? Are they all there or is there something missing? So those are just a few of the indicators that we look at that we can put into use to take a measurement over time and see if those indicators are going in the direction we want or moving away from, from the desired goals that we have for that piece of property. Uh, this is one of their biological monitoring sites. It's they established in 2017, so this has been here three years. And every year they come out here and they do an inventory of the grass, the kind of species that are here, all the different plants. Um, and if you look at this post, you can see the spine here is pointing to the south. And that way they know when they set their camera up here that they get the exact same place every time by setting it there um, in that direction where that's being pointed. And then you see the same thing in the background every single time. You see the foreground. And um, also we set up a, a line here that we can measure how far between the different plants and that sort of thing. One thing that I noticed since I was out here for a workshop last year, one of the concerns, because we made a stop here, was this little brown plant that you see coming in. And if you look out across here, it's called snakeweed. And we've had very dry conditions here this year, and this plant has not done very well. If you look out here, you can see probably about between 70 to 90% mortality on the snakeweed, uh, which is an invasive plant. It's really something that's not that desirable and we're, we're going in the right direction despite the drought. 
that we see. So this is a spot for our biological monitoring. We thought we'd just have a look around here. Those two things, the methodology and the, and the visual going together, create a really complete picture that actually doesn't take that much time. But the important thing is to get it started at the very beginning when you start to make changes so that you can get encouragement <laughs> as things get better. Um, it really is encouraging to see more plants growing on the same piece of ground, healthier animals, more wildlife, less erosion, higher water quality. Um, all those things can be achieved through better management and the monitoring can help us to know we're going the right direction.